What's going on everybody? It's Pelfrey. And uh, let's take a look at some water storage containers. I've been wanting to do something like this for a while and I finally got around to it and I, I needed to test it out, but I got both the caps open to let air in. And typically this piece here is connected to these uh, valves so that I can get water out of them. But I had an extra valve, so I took the slip fittings glued some three quarter inch PVC that way I can open the valves and this way I can fill both tanks together instead of independently which makes everything just a lot easier as far as filling the tanks up because before I had to fill one up and then make sure it didn't overflow and then fill the other one up so now I'm making 80 gallons and um, with the valves open it leveled out so whenever I first tried this the water in this container was probably to here whenever I opened the valves the water moved over into this tank until it leveled out so i'm absolutely thrilled with this i am making water on a more frequent basis um because i'm doing like eight or ten gallon water changes here i am having an issue with my spectra pure roadie uh we'll talk about that here in one second so the unit is running right now and as you can see i have a csp uh, di 90 manual flush but the pressure gauge stopped working and it stopped working a while back. I've sent two emails to Spectra Pure with uh, nothing back, not, e not even acknowledging that I've asked a question. So it's just something to consider and I get it. Um, I'm sure that they've been busy or whatever, but it's literally almost been a month since uh, I've sent the first email just asking what, what do I need to do? I mean, I'm assuming I need to just replace this pressure, pressure switch, but why did it fail? Since we're here, since I'm making water, output three, zero. Coming in, 125, and then line two, we're down to one, and again, zero. So, but yeah, this is super annoying, super annoying. And I like to know how much pressure I am going into it, especially because I have a booster pump running to the system. And if you aren't familiar with a manual flush or an automatic flush, uh, what it does is it flushes the system of any contaminants. I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure on it, so I'm not even gonna try to explain it, but I have a manual flush, which means I need to adjust this valve, and I, I try to do it every couple of hours um, for only like 30 or 45 seconds. The, the booster pump shuts off, and then whenever you flip the valve back on, the, bo the booster pump kicks back on. Now you'll probably also notice that I have some condensation here, which I hate. I hate this and I don't really know what else to do. So maybe somebody can offer some suggestions here. Now it is uh, pretty cold outside. Obviously the ground's gonna be cold. So the cold water coming into the unit is pretty cold. And this is in my laundry room. And what I do is I pump this out into the garage. So the water is going from a temperature controlled laundry room out into my garage, which is not temperature controlled, but the condensation is I mean, it's annoying more than anything, but sometimes it makes you think that you have a leak and obviously you can see it on the booster pump itself. So comments, suggestions, I would love to hear them. So if you follow me on Instagram, a while back I had an issue with flow in the BRS mini reactor and people said your inputs and outputs are swapped. Now the bracket on this BRS reactor swaps. And if you watched my previous video, you saw that there's four nylon screws and you can swap that bracket around. The input says input, the output says output. And since I added the refugium where the skimmer was, I wanted to put the uh, feed pump to the reactor in the return chamber. And this is kind of where we go full circle because I was originally gonna put it in the return chamber, but I do bubble scrub. This is the bubble scrub schedule that I use. What I needed to do was turn the reactor pump off as I bubble scrub, which is very simple to do with the Neptune Apex. So I have my, my bubble scrubbing set to run four times a day, just intermittently, not very long, just to oxygenate the water, scrub all the crap out of the water, if you will, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, is it beneficial? I don't know, but I'm kinda doing it right now, so it is what it is. So I added this code to the, the reactor pump. So if bu the bubbles are on, then the reactor pump goes off. And that's just because the pump is sitting directly underneath my air stone and I don't want to pump all them bubbles into the reactor that is holding carbon. So also if I have it set that if the core pump is off, then the reactor goes off. 
So I did swap the mounting bracket again so that I have the input on the right hand side going straight up from the return chamber and then I'm pumping the water from the reactor down into the refugium section. And um, you know, this is something that I talked about doing in a previous video and I decided that I was gonna just put it in the skimmer section, but the skimmer section and the refugium section changed. So again, I just made the swap. Now I do run filter socks. We've been over this before. Um, is there a benefit to running filter socks? I don't really know. Again, it's just something that I personally prefer. Uh, they work out for me. I did modify my sump to accept four inch filter socks. Now I still have to uh, adjust the four inch filter socks a little bit whenever I get them from Bulk Reef Supply, but you know, it's not the uh, end of the world. It's pretty safe to say that with the straggling uh, Cato Morpha, I've probably lost half of the ball. Um, whenever I get the loose fine particles, I just go ahead and pull them out and throw them away. I probably am gonna look at the bucket um, vacuum adapter so I can vacuum my sump out. I get it, it's not that big of a deal, but it annoys the crap out of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think it's like 30 bucks. You snap it onto a five gallon bucket. And it's just essentially a wet dry vacuum. Now I don't test the water very often. I'm just as guilty as anybody. And quite frankly, I don't have any reason to keep up with alkalinity at the moment, but it is staying at about eight, 8.2 as you just saw. Um, I am doing again, eight or 10 gallon water changes once a week. I'm not dosing anything into the tank except for acro power, only like five milliliters a day, nothing significant. But I really don't have any reason to check alkalinity daily. It's not a high demand tank. Nitrates are down quite a bit. So why add the Cato Morpha? Well, I want a refugium, I want pods. So that's kind of the, the reason that uh, I added the Cato Morpha. I don't really care about it really removing access nutrients because I don't really have access nutrients in the tank. I do plan to add some more fish, and if push comes to shove, I still do have uh, the nitrate and phosphate that I could dose into the tank. But all in all, I'm very thrilled with the uh, the tank so far. And I've been asked this uh, numerous times, do I plan to add SPS to this tank? And I do. Um, I've already seen SPS pieces. I've not been able to really keep them. Uh, whenever I, the, one of the first SPS pieces that I got um, way back when was um, a green slimer and it actually started to do okay and then the tank went downhill pretty quickly but I'm not done with SPS that whole structure in the middle I plan to have SPS on it I do plan to move the euphilia probably down to the sand bed uh, for now they're just kind of up on the rocks just because I don't have any anywhere else to put them but yes I do plan to add SPS to this tank I don't know how much yet I'm gonna be pretty selective on pieces and it's gonna have to be pretty hardy for me to keep them but I would like to try them out again, obviously, because I do have different lighting and I do feel like I am keeping the tank a little bit more stable with the regular water changes if we just rule out the fact that I'm not really testing the water. So it is a true statement. Once you've uh, got the SPS bug, you can't really go back. However, in my um, situation, it is going to be a mixed reef and how many uh, SPS acro corals I add to the tank is still undetermined. But I am happy with the Euphilia, and there are a couple more pieces that I would like to get before the uh, price really skyrockets and gets astronomical. I did change the gyre settings. I was running like a random uh, setting on both pumps. I now am running a manual setting, and the flow is actually changing every two hours to something completely different. And the, uh, the highest intensity that I'm going is 30%. And again, I don't have anything in the tank right now that demands much more flow than that. And 30% on this tank, which is a three foot tank with two uh, gyre 230 pumps is a pretty good amount of flow. The new Marco pieces that I added to the tank, as you can see, are starting to turn colors. I don't have any problem whatsoever with rock growing coralline algae in this tank. I know that some other uh, folks deal with white rock for as long as they have a tank running. Uh, I do have some algae on the rocks, but the uh, again, the, the, the Marco rocks are starting to turn um, purple and I'm um, very excited about that so that it blends in with the surroundings. That skull has been with me through the beginning so he's been through a lot. One of the clownfish has been with me since the beginning. It was my very first fish so he's been through a lot. A lot of these pieces have obviously been through a lot and um, again I'm just looking forward to getting the tank stocked up. The mushrooms again have, have done just phenomenal and uh, matter of fact, I do have a mushroom that just floats around in the tank because it, it's not attached to anything. So I just kind of let it do its thing until it starts get, to get close to the euphilia. 
And then I just kind of uh, take the little coral feeder and move it out of the way. You can see it there underneath the rock and it just kind of goes with the flow. These uh, conch fighting snails or whatever are awesome. They just go into the sand bed and um, do what they need to do. Again, I hope the Halloween crab doesn't decide that it wants to steal its crab, its shell. And the reason why there's bubbles in the tank is because I was bubble scrubbing. So that's why there are bubbles in the tank. Otherwise, there's never any bubbles in the tank. But that's going to be it. I do appreciate you following along. Be sure to check me out on Instagram on Pelfrey's Reef. Check out the website at pelfrey.net. And I'll catch you all on the next one.